Women Matters, part two for the resurrection. Last time, Christine gave us a wonderful uh, presentation, it is called, uh, about the resurrection from an integral point of view. And Monia, this time, she wanted to have us a different experience of resurrection. I'm wondering what that will be. And before we do the check-ins, <clears throat> I'm Heidi, as always, in Italy. A little coolish today, but you know, spring has been my my um, courtyard is still like that, and uh, it's wonderful. But the roses are now beginning beginning to come out. The the peach tree is flowering in a very nice way. I, I will show you afterwards how it is. And um, yeah, no, it's it's everything okay. And I give over to Martini. Unmute yourself. Yeah. I am from Kritzendorf, um, Austria. And the sun was shining. And I have a little, little secret to tell. I have my birthday today. And I start oh. the um, fourth quart of a century. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and um, I really look forward to the uh, courage of uh, Monia to talk about her resurrection. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had a beautiful day today. I'm very pleased to be with you and to share this. Uh, that I feel like a birthday child. Okay, I give um, uh, to Christine. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I did the redid my presentation this past Saturday at San Diego Integral, and I'll send out um, that info, my handouts. It was definitely a more polished presentation the second time around after working on it. But um, yeah, things here are good. Um, not, not too much to say, really. It doesn't seem to change very much week to week. It seems like we're just repeating the same thing over and over again. But little signs of spring, uh, enjoying some uh, flowers coming up and some new smells outside. And uh, that's always pleasant. And now we're on a different time zone, so it'll stay light later. Um, maybe get some more walks in, I hope. Okay. And I will pass to Hanali. Are you here, Hanali? Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm here in Johannesburg, and um, we have lovely weather. It's been very hot in the last week. We had a wonderful love wave on Saturday and we have a happiness wave on this coming Saturday because it's International Happiness Day. And on Wednesday night, I'm hosting and sharing a, a softening the edges of change workshop online. So I'm really curious about that. And we're also publishing our journal second version this week. So I'm all very, very happy and also happy to be here with all you ladies. And I pass on to Gertrude. Yeah, thank you. I'm Gertraud from the middle of Germany. Um, and uh, I did the recording. So my first online course is done on my side. Now it needs to be cut. And uh, yeah, so put the pieces together and, and uh, published and so. But I have done the recording and sent it out and said, where to cut and everything. Ooh. <laughs> that was a big relief after a year of struggling. And I just want to tell you that today I just talked to a friend of mine and her husband is uh, dying with cancer at the moment. So they thought he wouldn't make the weekend. So 
And this is my oldest friends here. In, so when the kids were little, we had we created a children's group together. And so uh, that really struck me. I mean, it's not completely unexpected, but I didn't hear from her a long time. And so I thought I have to call. <sighs> yeah, so I need to see if I want to to say goodbye in person. Let's see. And thank you, Heidi, for this wonderful peach tree <laughs> flowers. They're so pretty. They're really pretty. And I pass on to Victoria. I'm very sorry to hear that, Gertraud. That's really, that's really a um, sad thing. Um, I am, um, I was just writing in the chat on behalf of Beatrice, um, the time change, uh, she actually said she couldn't come and um, because she has these work conflicts and she can't get out of them. Um, but but then she, she wanted so much to hear Monia's take on the resurrection <laughs> that she will try to slip in and slip out um, with your permission. Um, she, she would have been here punctually, but her, um, her, there was no train. She was standing on the train platform she, on the way to her work meeting. So she, um, she was, she's waiting. She, anyway, she's going to talk to us from a park bench outside of her work meeting <laughs> for a few minutes. So maybe when she comes, um, if, I mean, depending on the flow of the conversation, if she could get a chance to um, say something, well, if she wants to say something. Um, anyway, uh, and happy birthday, Martini. That's wonderful news and um, everything's wonderful news. And um, Christine, um, I, I'm, I'm uh, reporting back to the group. <laughs> I attended the San Diego Integral meeting um, on Saturday and um, Christine gave a really wonderful presentation. Um, much more, I, I got a lot out of it. It was great. Um, a lot to think about and um, and actually the whole meeting was really amazing. I just, I was amazed to find um, so many brilliant inquiring people in one space. It, it was, it was quite, um, quite humbling to realize that all these uh, people are out there thinking, thinking great thoughts and um, really investing in the life of the spirit. It was, a, it was an amazing experience. So I'm really grateful I got to attend that. Thank you, Christine. Um, and other than that, for, for me, I'm just um, just practicing Bach around the clock. My first concert is uh, two weeks from tomorrow night. And then there's the second concert just one week after that. So it's incredibly intense work. And um, the nice part is that I wake up in the morning with the soundtrack in my head. <laughs> And even if I wake up in the middle of the night, there'll be like, I'll suddenly I'll be in the middle of a fugue or something. So it's, it's, that's, I don't know, it's, it's exciting and fun, but it's also scary and it's um, very, very draining work, but I'm excited to be playing again. So um, I didn't want to take up any more time. That was just kind of Beatrice's check-in and my check-in. Um, and um, I think Heidi, you didn't actually check in yet, and Monia, or unless Monia wants, I think since you're going to talk, should you want to do them together? I Sorry, that I was awkward. Some, I did some sort of check in, and I would give over to Monia. Okay, so give over to Monia. I'm looking forward. This is very, um, it's a great topic. Yeah, Monia in Vienna, and it's cold, uh, and I hope. <clears throat> All of you are ready to join me to a descent to ground zero because I prepared uh, a, a meditation, a guided meditation, because we will be talking about resurrection, but before resurrection can occur, death is a prerequisite. So although it's Martini's birthday, I hope you are all prepared to die. 
uh, in the next couple of minutes. I don't know how long it takes, about five or 10 minutes, so it's not too long. And I would ask you to have a piece of paper and a pencil ready because there will be three concepts or three uh, definitions that will arise and will uh, how you resurrect. <clears throat> So, uh, oh, Beatrice is here too. So, uh, if you are ready, tell me if you're ready. Show me, show me that you're ready, that you have plucked up your courage to come with me to Ground Zero. I'm a Scorpio, so Plutonic experiences don't, they're natural to me. Maybe not for all of you. You can go as deep as you want. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to hear how you resurrect yourself individually. So, um, some of you may know that the Sumerian goddess Inanna uh, went to the underworld like Christ later on. And she was resurrected after three days, just like Christ. So this is a myth probably around new moon. I don't know, but uh, actually uh, Inanna goes down into the underworld to meet her shadow sister, Ereshkigal, who sits there in the darkness and wails and mourns the loss of her husband. And I'm sure all of you remember situations you were faced with something so overwhelming that it felt like death, a loss, an illness, a devastating event. So please brace yourself, close your eyes, put your feet on the ground. So really ground yourself, breathe into your hara, under your navel. And I called Ground Zero after the terrible tragedy in New York City. That's the ground where you have no way, no map, no stars, nothing to guide you. You just have to give up at this Ground Zero. And I've been there several times and I noticed that after some time I return. And so I was interested in the mechanism. So close your eyes, take several deep breaths and relax. What is your mood right now? Let it go. Be aware of your breathing and with every out breath you sink deeper and deeper into this dark realm, the underworld. You leave behind your intentions you had just a couple of minutes ago, your plans, your concepts, what should be. They do not matter anymore. And you plummet deeper and deeper into a darkness you hoped never to experience. There is nothing to support you, to keep you safe. No stars to guide me, just darkness. Sink into it, accept it. This is ground zero, where nothing lives, nothing grows, nothing is, just emptiness. And there, in the deepest darkness, she is, your shadow sister, the goddess of the underworld forever wailing about her fate for what she has lost most dearest to her. Let us join her in her pain and desolation, help her mourn, help her cry. Join into your, her moans and cries, open your mouth, show your empathy. Show that you're willing to participate in her devastation. 
as loud as you can. Moan, shout, open your mouth. You will need the sound of your voice, like in the tradition of the wailing women, to make your pain felt. Join into the morning Join into the sorrow, join into her pain. It is your pain. What you lost, what you will never have back, what you have to give up. It is your pain, she feels. And all of a sudden you can hear a faint call, the call of your eternal soul, which will guide you out of this darkness. But first you have to make a sacrifice. You have to leave something behind to be able to ascend again. What comes to your mind? Which do you still cherish, but know it's obsolete? Choose wisely, see it or feel it or hear it. You will remember what it is when you will be back in your normal state of mind. In placing this ritually at her feet, in leaving it behind, in giving it up, you notice that you are being pulled up from where you came. The darkness changes into a twilight, like dawn in the morning. Everything is still a light gray. And then you are approached by a figure who smiles at you and offers you in a chalice the water of life. You drink. And you notice what invigorates you, what fills you with energy again, makes your synapses fire again, enables you to be creative again. See it and feel it clearly. Remember it well. And you are approached by a second figure who smiles at you and offers you the bread of life. And you take a bite. What revives your senses? What gives you strength and power over your body? You eat from the bread. You feel it, see it, hear it. What is this energy? Remember it well. And slowly you ascend the last steps. The light is getting brighter. The new day will welcome you soon. You carry water and bread. The water and bread of life with you. When you carefully step out into the daylight. Take a deep joyful breath, feel alive and tingling with a new perspective on life. Take another breath, let it go, let it fill you with joy. And when you are ready, open your eyes and write down what you had to leave behind and what water of life and bread of life constitute for you right now. Take your time. 
and thank you for your courage to join me to Grand Syria. Just give me a signal when you are ready to join into a discussion. Christine, are you ready to? Or do we still need some time? I can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Uh, do you still need some time to write? No, no I've got it. Okay. Um, so what I would like to share is how do we resurrect ourselves? How do we find after we have been really unable to do anything because we've been so shocked and so hurt, how do we return and what, and in case you want to share that as well, what is it that you had to leave behind to be able to find a new perspective to return to life? Um, I was surprised at how easy it was to descend and, and uh, uh, kind of feel the pain. And um, I was glad when the woman showed up because it was much better not to be there by myself. I, I was happy for that, <laughs> that she, I had somebody there with me. Um, but uh, I left behind a, a piece of my heart because what I imagined in the descent was the things that I've lost, um, mostly miscarriages, um, an abortion when I was in college, and all those painful memories and the mothering that I didn't get to experience. Um, so I, I felt like I was leaving behind a piece of my heart to share because that's what I would have wanted to share uh, in life. And I guess coming up what made it possible to return, um, I, I, I don't know, that's, that's a hard one. I guess 
it sounds kind of cliche, but I guess just hope, um, a sense that things do go on, um, that there's more, uh, that things aren't finite, but they're more infinite. Um, and maybe a hope of some kind of uh, eventual res resurrection and reunion at some point in the future. I guess that was what enabled me to rise back, uh, rise back up. And I will turn it over to Gertrude. Going down, the first thing that came to my mind was when I had stones in my, what do you say, the gland, saliva gland, here the, on the side when the whole face was swollen on the side and they wanted to operate and um, so I had surgery. Um, appointment but then I real then I could get the stones by massaging and but there was one one day especially so the 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 pain was so so awful that one day I thought if it's over it's good <laughs> so it was really like and and the pain didn't go away right away, but it kind of was away. It was not connected to my core somehow. So that was the first thing that came to my mind and losses. And, and even realizing that there is another didn't help. <laughs> it was kind of just bottom and the first thing that came to my mind when you asked Monia was fear what do I leave there it's fear fear of darkness fear of pain fear of dying fear of people <laughs> Uh, and I didn't make it I didn't make the resurrection it was more like letting go like in in uh, what do you say in fairy tales then all of a sudden you're <laughs> in another realm so it was not not willfully making it no way. Yes. There was no act, <laughs> willful act involved. It was more that letting go. But you're back now? Yeah, in your normal. Better way. I don't know. I don't know if it's normal. <laughs> yep. it, in your beta waves, not the alpha. Yeah, so I'm, um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And you have no idea what brought you back? You don't the closest have to that comes to it is letting go. Okay. Of the fear, yeah. Okay. That there was something that changed in this, yeah. Okay. But even that I couldn't do. <laughs> no, but it, it was done to you. You are offered the, the water of life and you are offered the bread of life. So, yeah. Beatrice asked to be next. Thank you, Gertrude. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you for letting me uh, be a part of Parsh Partial today. Um, I'm so glad that I, I tuned in right when you were starting, Monia. Um, it was a beautiful meditation. It it was a walking meditation for me because uh, mm -hmm. I was walking from the train. <laughs> um, 
Um, but uh, I think it is so apropos of this moment um, as we are experiencing the one year anniversary, at least here in the US. For me, I've been thinking a lot about this, the one year anniversary of the pandemic and various things that have happened, happened at the beginning, things that shut down, things that couldn't happen that were supposed to happen. Um, and, and for me, I've, I've been mourning the loss of my, my thesis installation, which uh, was supposed to open a year ago, uh, two days ago. So on the 13th, no, 12th, on the 12th. Um, but I've felt in this last week, I've felt, I felt the heaviness and the sadness of all of that and of the one year anniversary, but I've also suddenly been feeling new life and new creativity and I've gotten excited about new collaborations. And so even in the train before I tuned in, I was thinking I was actually typing something to myself about springtime and the earth and new birth and coming out of this dark period. Um, so, this is a beautiful <laughs> synchronicity and, and so appropriate for this moment. For me, I think resurrection comes from the three days of rest. Um, that's the thing that's striking me right now. Um, and you have to feel, you feel the morning and the loss and the pain. And then there's a time of just letting the dust settle and resting and absorbing and preparing. And then comes the new energy and the new life. And, um, and you know, that's in the story of Jesus and in the, in the myth that you shared. And, and I think that's also for me what this year has felt like, even though I've been very busy, but there has been a certain amount of letting things absorb that now as I start a new year, um, I'm ready to kind of take what I've absorbed into into new life, um, and yeah, a very beautiful, beautiful meditation. Um, I want to do it sometime. I'll listen to the recording and do it sometime when I'm not walking. But even walking, it was it really resonated with me. And um, what what am I letting go of? I think there's a certain amount of attachment of of expectations and plans and pressures of what's supposed to be happening um, and kind of this like clenched fist feeling. And I think I've, I've been doing a lot of that, trying to hold on to everything um, and grasp everything. And I think the invitation is to do that, um, to open up the hands and let, let things enter in um, rather than trying to grab. Um, so I think there's, there's more to it for me, but that's what I'm going to share for now. I'm going to stay for a few more minutes and then I have to, I have to leave, but um, so beautiful. Thank you. And so, so appropriate for this moment. Um, and, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Monia. And thank you and for joining us and yeah. these circumstances. It's really great. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I will pass to, to my mother. I'd, I'd love to hear her sharing. I don't want you to be late for your appointment. <laughs> the mother, the mother part is kicking in. Um, I, I can tell you later, sweetheart, go, go to your work because it's Listen to the recording, Beatrice. Don't miss your date. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'll be I'll be responsible. Okay. <laughs> I just am loving being in the space. Well, love to all of you. Thank you for letting me enter in and to share. And I will I will listen to your sharing then. Uh, and it's Martini next birthday. time. It's happy Martini. birthday. Happy birthday, Martini. I hope your day <laughs> is wonderful. So lovely to share with you. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs> I love you. Love you. Um, thank you for <laughs> letting her interrupt. She was so she was so disappointed. Um, it was because of the time change. Things got complicated. Um, 
I, um, yeah, for me, it was a very, um, I, I would love to do this really, really slowly sometime and, and really like stay down there as scary as it is. Cause I feel like there's a lot, it, it felt, I felt kind of because of the, you know, and I know, you know, the constraints of time because of this meeting, but it felt a little bit to me, like I went down in an elevator and then right back up. <laughs> so, so it wasn't, um, so I, I'm curious what will come up if I can do it really, really, really slowly sometime, because um, in this, in this short amount of time, um, I didn't, I didn't feel my um, my heart enter into it. Actually, I was really um, moved that Christine and Gertrude, uh, not Gertrude, um, yes, Gertrude. Um, sorry, I'm still half asleep. Um, I mean, to have a to have a, a strong experience. Um, for for me, my 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 sort of the idea I think uh, reigned over the emotions because of the of this the the shortness of the exercise so um so it's it was very conventional it was it was what I I mean it was sincere but it's um it, as I said it was I I didn't it wasn't as experiential as I would it would like um but it so when I was leaving something behind it was myself and um leaving behind or what, um, I know Christine, you follow Richard Rohr too, um, you know, the, the idea of the false self. And that's what I left behind. Um, and it was hard, like Beatrice said, it was hard to relinquish this grasp, this holding on to um, partly fear and partly um, attachment. Um, but that's, but I also, you know, even without going down to ground zero, it's, it's, it's sort of my, that's my deepest wish is to, is to get to that point where I can really let it, let it all go once and for all and, and be, you know, embrace the true self. So, so that was, um, and the water of life and the bread of life, again, it was, you know, it's, it's a really beautiful meditation. I, I, you know, I could spend hours and days with each element. <laughs> um, so again, the water of life and the bread of life, because I'm, you know, firmly um, Im embedded in the Christian experience where, you know, it was the traditional, it, you know, that of, of, um, of Jesus being the bread of life and the water, the water of life that he offered, you know, to the woman at the well. So, um, but if, you know, it was wonderful because that's any, that's my faith, but I just love the way, I love the imagery and the way the, the sort of moving from one to the other, rather than just thinking of these things as in their own boxes, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, so I hope I'd love to have like a whole weekend just just doing, just contemplating this, it would be great um, to really spend time in each transition. Um, so I will, having said that, I will pass it to Martini, the birthday girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed the meditation very intensively. I'm used to it from the Zen meditation. And um, I have painted in um, um, Märchen in a fairy tale, um, three women who were sitting down there. Uh, I, I cannot really recall it now, but I was very pleased that those women were there. Um, I uh, 
what I have to leave behind is the uncertainty the, uh, to be disconnected and uh, being naked, Na naked, just naked. And I have just had a dream that I was naked, naked, and all the people were closed and I was naked. And I thought, well, Mati, why do you do that? I am naked. And, and this is a beautiful experience that we can be naked, you know? We do not have to um, give an image. So, uh, I, I, and coming back from, from, uh, from uh, so that it got more light, I thought, okay, this is my experience, what I have all the time. You know, if I, uh, you are uh, telling uh, Victory, Victoria that you are uh, playing a fugue, yeah? And you are doing it again and again and again. And if I, I am painting, I am so unsure, but if I just let it go, it is there, it is there, you know? And to have this experience that it is, we are, we are the uh, water, the bread, and it is not Jesus, but it is, we are the bread and the, the water and the joy. And, and uh, how to, uh, you ask how to resur resurrect ourselves. I do not have to do anything, just leave it. And this is the, the most beautiful present and I just have to accept it. And I also have to, um, you said it beautifully, once and for all, I would like to leave this behind me. And I was laughing about it because I would love to have this certainty for all the time, but I don't have it. It comes and comes and it goes away and it, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. And this is to have empty hands, just an empty hands. And I think it was beautiful, Moria, this, this, um, the text of the um, very powerful and very um, tiny. And uh, it has everything what we need. And we just trust ourselves to the experience we make because then everything is coming to me again. It's coming. And why was I so scared that I, I can't do it? Why should, why do I do it? Yeah, why do I play the fugue? I am, I'm not talking about a, a pencil, yeah? Uh, 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 and, a, and a water and a co the color. And then oh, this uncertainty, what I all the time have, but this is going to the edge of our uh, experiencing and have the courage to, to, to go to the edge that you fall in the, in the depths. It is so dark and so painful because, Monia, thank you very much. I, I am very pleased to have experienced it. This is a, a birthday present. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have an ask, and uh, Christine and uh, uh, you, uh, Victoria, mentioned from Richard Rohr. You have been there. Uh, I love him. I think um, you uh, you told it when I met you the first time, um, Christine. You told about Richard Rohr, and since then I have a, a connection with him. I am so pleased because he is inspiring quite a bit. Yeah, and uh, 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 yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So thank you very much. <laughs> I give over to um, Heidi. Thank you, Martini. That was a real, I don't know what to call that. 
a fire expression of <laughs> of you. It was wonderful. Thank you. So me, I've forgotten actually. <laughs> I felt I would have liked to be a bit longer in all the steps because I felt a little rushed and I have sometimes a little bit of need some time to enter, but I had some pictures more than other things. I could see the, the women down there, the black one. And the other and what I needed to what I had in my hand all the time, it was sort of a glass ball with, you know, like little or um, a band or something or leaves, but they were red on top. So, and it was a, more like a crystal uh, ball and it was in colors. Later came to me, maybe it's the earth, I don't know, but I didn't see it in that time. And I, I offered it, I didn't have to leave it there. I offered it to, to stay there. And that was nice. Then when the, the water came, I drank it like, like this, but then I, I, had, I put it over my head and it was like a shower and it was all white. And I, I felt like in a white dress and very growing in, inside. Well, the water came down, I was growing out and then I was opening my arms like this. And I felt like a dervish dancing around. <clears throat> and that was very nice. With the bread, I had a little bit of, prob of a problem to, to see it because I thought about a German bread, you know, so it's such a big, big thing. And then, <laughs> then I used an Italian dry pizza, you know, a small thing. And this was good. I could eat it and it was cr crunchy. It was cr 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 and this was sort of like little sparks, you know, of energy. And I really could feel very much energized afterwards. That, that, that was good. How far it relates with my own life, I'm not so sure because I didn't really find one episode to concentrate of, of rebirth. I think I had so many, I don't know. <laughs> but in some way it has to do with these little cracks, 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 cracks with the, with the sparks. And every time I was reborn, it was like, yeah, like my fire, no? First little, 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 and then more and more and more, and it came out. And it's not really a whole lot I can do. Maybe I can help a little bit with breathing or listening to music or something, but at the end, it's going by itself, I think. And I have a trust that it's the right, the right thing. Okay, and I give over to Hanalee. So, Mrs. just let me know if I need to put my camera off if, you, if I break up with my internet connection. Thank you, Monia. It was a very interesting experience because I've been to that place so many times. So, it was, there was sort of a detachment, but also being very present to it as I was going deeper and deeper. And what I had to leave behind was being abandoned by the masculine, which was caused during my dad's death when I was very young. So I had to leave that deep felt pain behind. And I now flew to my body again. And what brought me back to life was my original voice, hearing it. and feeling it in my cells. And I realize now I have had to go down there so many times because I couldn't really access that deep, deep pain. I kept it in my cells for so long. So thank you very much. And I give over to you, Monia. Yes, so I rushed you down in the elevator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I wasn't sure how much time we would have. And as those who know, my, I am rather impatient getting where I want to go. Um, 
Yeah, I have this, uh, I wrote it down so I can send it to Heidi and you can read it by yourself and take your time. And uh, yeah, I, the inner myth is to me, not just only because I once got that name from an energy master, but to me it uh, showed the mechanisms of so many things, also of the Christian faith, um, how they how they are connected with nature, and how we are, as Martini said, uh, there is not there is nothing more than us. It's all in us, and we experience it if we dare to, or we don't. And that's okay too, because you just get as much to solve as much as you can. That's my experience in life. And yeah, any more questions? Heidi, I saw you open your mouth and really wail because nobody else dared to because I couldn't have we couldn't have heard it because you all were muted so you could have wailed and shouted and screamed as much as you wanted but none, nobody was able to so why is that no I actually did and I like that yeah because the the sound lifts you up in my experience when you really let it go and you shout it and yeah, I just scream and because we rarely, at least in my civilization, we rarely scream at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe this would be a good opportunity if you next time you scream as much as you can. When there was the funeral of Mark, I did sort of a mixture between singing and screaming. It was mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was sort of liberating. It was good. And Somehow I did not not as extreme as this, but I did it. Like, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean. it's changing. It's it's changing your 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 feeling towards the thing. You know, it's because it's sort of you give it form in some way. Right. This is some a custom we don't have anymore in our civilization and I just read about it old Roman customs and yeah you not just wail and shout you curse and you curse your fate and you curse all the gods and you curse but it relieves you the, what is pent up what is what you hold on to you and which really hurts you so yeah, so our hour is closing. And I would I like to, uh, to say a very short poem of um, Rose Ausländer. Do you know Rose Ausländer? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, where are they, the um, resurrected? Those who have um überwunden ja tot those who have overcome uh, overcome their death uh liebkosen liebkosen how how do you call that martini mm -hmm. why don't you say it in german and oh, then yeah. Oh, yeah. Is translated. Yeah, i'm sorry <laughs> but uh, it is so schön and so kurz und das ist echt um zumonia ihr ihr Wo sind die Auferstandenen, die ihren Tod überwunden haben, das Leben liebkosen, sich anvertrauen dem Wind? Ros Ausländer, das ist alles. Beautiful. Uh, sich anvertrauen, so you, as, as uh, Gertrud said, and it happens by itself. So you trust the wind, you trust the mechanism of resurrection. And you actually don't have to do much. You just have to be present. 
und die kosmische Intelligenz zu trauen. Yeah. Well, that, this is why I called, said, uh, said it's, it's the call of your eternal soul that calls you up again. And uh, yeah, so I invented this meditation for you actually. And, and I hope it, yeah, not just for Martini's birthday, but I hope it really got you somewhere and showed you some of your the mechanism how you resurrect yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Signora Inanna. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, thank you all. And so, uh, how will we will continue next time. What will we do? Yeah, let's do that after the recording. Okay. Uh, but first, do a short check out and then we, we stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who wants to start? Okay. Martini, I just want to say a happy birthday. I wish we could sing to you. And um, I'm just wishing you a most precious time, you know, in the coming season. And thank you, Monia, for this incredible experience and all you beautiful ladies here uh, sharing this group energy. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Monia. Um, that was really beautiful. And as I said, I'd, I'd like to um, dedicate a whole weekend to it as a, as a kind of retreat. Um, and it's one thing I wanted to say um, that, that, that occurred to me while I was in it was um, that I'm very grateful for is the, this, the, the, uh, the power of the imagery and um, it's just so beautiful that the, the color, you know, because I'm an art historian and also a musician, I was, I was, um, even though I went down in the elevator, <laughs> it was, it was, um, I, the colors and the, the tonalities of the colors and the, um, and then I also was thinking about Orpheus and um, I had this, you know, like little, little fragments of, um, of the, the opera Orfeo, I don't know, it's just very potent in terms of um, the senses. So really beautiful. So thank you so much. Um, and happy birthday, Martini. Um, I think it's, I feel really privileged that we got to celebrate with you a little bit. And, um, and I wanna thank everyone for sharing um, because it was a very, um, very powerful experience. I'm really glad that I could be here and um, and yeah, prayers for your friend Gertraud, and um, strength for the time to come for your family and for his family and for him. So lots of love to everybody and thank you, blessings. Should I pass it on to someone or um, who's ready to go, Gertraud? <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Monia. Uh, when Heidi was sharing about the bread and the water, I realized I didn't even get that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would love to to do it again, and uh, maybe we we could have find another way to maybe do an hour before and then have the conversation about it later. So meet an hour earlier or something like that. So, um, yeah, thank you. And a fantabulous, amazing year for you, <laughs> Martini. Happy, happy, happy birthday. And um, Heidi, you beneath the blossoms of the peach. That's really nice. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, thank you, everyone. And it was, for me, it was so clear, like you said the word come in, uh, go down, I knew exactly how it felt. Uh, to let go, I knew exactly what to, I mean, I was like, coming in like that. So, so I'm really happy for the clarity. Thank you. So as I heard that people want to do this again, I have a suggestion to Monia. 
that she records it with long intervals in the middle so that everybody when they have need more time can click on the on the keyboard and and direct it because here it is in the middle so it's not so really good and we need only audio we don't need um, video no so we can do it together or you do it so would be a good good idea so as i'm talking now i do already check out also i i know martini is still and also monia um yeah martini happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday martini happy birthday to you <laughs> Yeah, and get out. That's a difficult time for for your friend. And I know you have also uh, to struggle in your life and your family with similar things. So I wish you resurrection and, you know, for all the people uh, concerned. And yeah, I'm always amazed of what we can do together and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Thank you. And before I think Martini, we give the next and then you, you, you close us out, Monia, okay? Yes. Thank you very much for being together and sharing so beautiful moments together. And last time, or the, the time before the last time, uh, Gertrud asked if we uh, could um, uh, make a drawing session or something like that, yeah? And I would love to do that. Uh, we do a meditation before, and uh, I do uh, give uh, an exercise like gestures. Um, you uh, take three parts of an, a sculpture, say, or, or a thing you really love, yeah? You take it in front of you and you are looking at this object as long as the object is looking back to you. And then you start with a pencil and you draw it, but you don't look on your paper. You just look on the um, um, object. and. Um, after three minutes, I say, I, I look at the time, I say, stop. And you never looked on your page. And this is to open up and to become loose and to become not afraid. Oh, how I, did I do this line? Did I do it beautiful and things like that? So that is a blind drawing. And this is a very nice experiencing, first of all, uh, to look to something what you don't take the time to look so long at, you know, uh, to observe it so intensive, contemplative. And this is a very fine experience. I can do that once when the time is ready. And I, I have to say, I am very pleased that this weekend, my paintings are going out of the, uh, the house. So I am so released. Somebody told it today um, uh, that she was released, that things are gone. Yeah, you, I think get out, it was you. Yeah, and, and um, uh, I, I am so pleased if I have a wall with no painting, just naked. <laughs> I think that it's the beautifulest wall. Yeah, um, uh, like Han uh, Hanali, you don't have anything behind you and it is just beautiful. <laughs> but, but I have the painting. So um, the, the, thank you very much, uh, Moria for a nice experience and I give it to you, back to you. I'm wondering, uh -huh. Anneli, have you checked out yet? Uh -huh. Okay, I shall. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, Victoria has to leave, so bye Victoria. And I was just wondering because actually there is a, also a tarot spread of Inanna where she has, when she goes down, 
she has to go through seven gates and at every gate she has to leave something behind. Uh, and that's a very, very, a very, very deep uh, spread. And we've done it several times and it really brings you down slow, but uh, you have to leave. You notice what you have to leave behind. So this is also a possibility. And I thank you all. Yeah, that's my checkout. <laughs>